Okay, so let's now summarize what we've learned so far. So what have we learned so far? Well, we looked at the sine rule, which was that if I take sine of an angle in any triangle, so there's a triangle, uh, A, B, and C, and again, it doesn't matter what that triangle looks like. If I take that angle, I put it in a sine, and I divide it by the opposite side, which is that side there, okay then I'll get the same answer as when I take sine of any other angle in that triangle so let's say angle B okay but it could have been angle C and I divide with that opposite side okay so there's a root there's that relationship that is called the sine rule so this is the sine rule and then we also got the cosine rule now the cosine rule says that if I have any side squared if I square any side, so let's say we take this side and we square it, we will get the same answer than if we take the other two sides and square them. So A squared and B squared, oh sorry, C squared, that's C because it's opposite the C angle. C squared, A squared plus C squared. And we subtract then 2 times AC cos capital B. In other words, the relationship here we see between the parameters in here is that we've got three sides, where in this one we only have two sides. Here we have three sides are used. One is being calculated, the other two are given, and then we only have one angle that is given. And the angle that is given is the angle that is opposite the side I want. So if this is the angle I'm given, then I can only use that angle to calculate this side. Okay, well, with that is called the cosine rule. Now, the purpose of this video is to just make a summary of when will I use which of these two. So there's only two to use. When will I use which one? So let's make a little table. So I'll always either want to calculate in a triangle that I'm trying to solve. I'm either going to want to calculate an angle or a side. Okay, now I'm going to look at what will I need to calculate an angle if I want to use the sine rule. So what we're going to do is we say we want to calculate an angle. So let's say we want to calculate A. Okay, so that must be the one that I want. Then these must be the ones that are given. Let's put the given ones in blue. Okay, so that one must be given that one must be given and that one must be given so what do we need to use this formula we need one opposite side okay so one opposite side which means it's opposite the angle that I'm trying to find okay and I also need another angle and its opposite side okay so I'm going to call it an opposite pair so in order to use the sine rule to calculate an angle, I need the opposite side to that angle and an opposite pair. Okay, how about a side if I want to calculate a side length? So then if I want to calculate a side length, let's say we want to calculate A, that side length, then I need the opposite angle, opposite angle plus another opposite pair. Again, I just need those those two values, an opposite pair. So here you can see I'm going to use this if I have an opposite pair. If I've been given an opposite pair, I must be given something else, either an angle or a side, okay? And if I have that angle, or that side I can use it to calculate the opposite side or the opposite angle so can you see when you're going to use the sine rule when I have an opposite pair okay how about the cosine rule okay well obviously I'm going to use the cosine rule if I don't have an opposite pair but let's see what that's going to look like if I want to calculate an angle I want to calculate an angle and I've got then I see what I'm going to need. Again, I, I want to calculate. Let's put what I want to calculate in pink. 
Okay, so this is what I want to calculate an angle. Then I'm going to need B, which is the opposite side, A, which is another side, and C, which is another side. And there's another A and C is just used twice. Okay, so now you can see if I want to use this cosine rule to calculate B, I need three sides. So if I have three sides, and only three sides of a triangle, so I've got that, that, and that, and only that, no of the angles, then I don't have an opposite pair, because an opposite pair is, is an angle and its opposite side. So I might have three sides there, and that's one possibility of not having an opposite pair. I've got three sides, then I can use that side to calculate B. And if I've calculated this angle B, then I have an opposite pair, then I've got this value uh, that one already given and that one that's now been calculated so I have an opposite pair and for the rest of the angles I can use the sine rule okay now if I uh, want to use this to calculate an angle okay so now I want to calculate sorry not an angle a side B is now the object of the formula I want to calculate the length B then I see what I'm going to need is the other two sides and the angle that is opposite B. So let me just draw that. Okay, so here is the triangle. There's angle B and there is B. So you can see I'm trying to calculate B, which means I don't have that value, but I have this angle. So I don't have an opposite side. I want to calculate an opposite side. I'm not given the opposite side, but I am given two other side lengths A and C because this one would then be A and that one would be C and you can see now what we've been given we've been if I look at this if I want to calculate B I see I'm going to need the opposite angle the opposite angle is what I'm going to need plus the two other sides Okay, I'm trying to calculate one side, so there's two sides, sides left. Now again, notice how the angle that I was given is not opposite the sides I've been given. So I don't have an opposite pair in this case. What I do have actually, in other words, another way of writing this is by saying I've been given two sides plus an inclusive angle. In other words, the angle that these two sides make. So if I have two sides and the angle that those two sides make, that's called an inclusive angle, then I'll use the cosine rule to find the opposite side length. And when I have these opposite, then I have an opposite pair. And to calculate the other two angles, I can continue by using the sign rule. So this is a little table that you can go and set up before you do any of these questions. It won't take you long to set it up. Um, you can just simply look at this. You don't have to go and memorize it. You just need to know the formulas which is usually given on your formula sheet. Okay, so look at those formulas quickly. Jot down what would you need to use that and then go and apply it. Maybe you are going to need a little bit of extra time to do that. So if you're a slow worker, you are going to have to commit this to memory, okay, which is terrible okay so hopefully you can work a little bit faster on the rest of your paper so that you have a bit more time to first generate this table before you do these questions in an exam okay that's me for now now we get to the examples I've been promising all along see you there